The Ryzen 7 7800X3D is currently the number one selling CPU in the world, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can tune the CPU to the best of its ability via a thing known as the Curve Optimizer. And today we're going to be taking advantage of AMD's Precision Boost Overdrive 2 with this CPU because outside of this feature, there is really no way to overclock or essentially underclock the Ryzen 7 7800X3D. It's essentially a locked CPU, but what we can do with PBO2 is sort of set an offset and that will give us more performance. Where the actual differences between this X3D chip and say an AM4 X3D chip like the 5800X3D and the 5700X3D is actually quite a big difference here when it comes to undervolting this CPU. And it's not just in the methodology, it's also in the final results too. But we'll get onto that a little bit later in the video. Let's start off with what you need to embark on this endeavor where we are going to download a program called Ryzen Master. And this, you can get this from AMD's website. Now this program should work on all Ryzen 7000 chips. However, you may come into issues if you are on a particular A620 motherboard. I have had my mileage vary depending on the motherboard I use. But if you're on a B650 or an X670, for instance, you should have no problems using this program and the Ryzen 7 7800X3D. However, let's fast track and open up this program and then there should be the option Curve Optimizer. And here's where we can fast track today's tuning by just going to the all core setting and then pretty much going into the down arrow and setting it to minus 10 just to start off with because a lot of you guys in yesterday's comment section were saying that you couldn't even get close to minus 30 but we'll get onto that a little bit later as well if you're having problems even getting past minus 10 for instance because there are some other tricks outside of just setting in a blanket minus 10, minus 20, minus 30, for example. But let's explain all of that right now. We've got the minus 10 setting here. Now, in yesterday's video, I did make a mistake and I did say it was just flat out millivolts, but it's actually stages. So what minus 10 means here is we're taking it down 10 stages. And how AMD uh, pretty much interprets these stages to the average user like us is that we understand it as one stage can be anywhere from three to five millivolts in an undervolt itself. So by taking it down minus 10 steps here, we're actually taking it down minus 30 to minus 50 millivolts in an undervolt for the 7800X3D. But this is actually a really good thing because a lot of these chips are pretty much overvolted out of the factory. So they can pretty much deal with uh, variants where a good chip will still run the same as a underperforming chip and that's just for consistency purposes because when they make these chips they've got things known as standard deviations in terms of failure rates and so having voltages just set across the board means that they can lock in a profile that'll work for all the CPUs and they won't have customers returning their CPUs unlike a particular company right now that's kind of a bit hot in the water with some of their flagship i9 and i7 CPUs. But back to the Ryzen Master program, here's where we can take this down to minus 10. And then there's actually a button here called Validate Offset. And I absolutely love this feature about this program because we can get to the bottom of stability testing very quickly, or at least finding close to what our stable clocks will be in terms of this offset curve optimized setting. And so locking this in with validate offset here, minus 10 worked absolutely fine for me. I then decided to take it down to minus 20 and do the same thing, validate offset. Then I went down to minus 30, that worked absolutely fine. It wasn't until I hit minus 40 on this chip that it then the whole system just immediately crashed out. So I know that minus 40 will not work on my Ryzen 7 7800X3D and minus 30 worked absolutely fine. But this is great, the whole system reset just in time for me to hit delete and F2 and go into the BIOS and then manually change some settings within the BIOS itself. Now, unlike yesterday's tutorial with the 5700X3D, I found that the PBO2 tuner, that's a program that you can use in Windows for very quickly and easily tuning the AM4 CPUs, the X3D CPUs, it actually didn't work on the 7800X3D. So this is pretty much the quickest and best method for tuning your Ryzen 7 7800 X3D. But let's go into the BIOS here and you can go into the AMD overclocking settings from the advanced tab. And then from here, you can go accept and just go and lock into the curve optimizer settings here and change them to the manual and go into the advanced setting here. And then also what you can do here is then change it to negative and then lock in the previous stable voltage that we had before our system crashed out. So in this case for me, it ended up just being 30. And so 
This is what I've been saying in the past as well. 30s generally worked across all my CPUs. I haven't come into a bad uh, clock and an unstable system under 30. So locking in this negative 30 offset here will be what we want to do. And then after that, I do make sure there are some other settings that I do lock in personally in the BIOS here. For instance, this is a 6200 megahertz DDR5 XMPs. I make sure they're locked in as well as disabling all the TPM and platform trust module settings because I'm using Windows 10 and I like the snappiest experience even if I'm just benchmarking and not using this system as my main video editing system. But there's also another key uh, element here that we're going to talk about and that is if you are having instability issues for those people that talk about minus 10 not working minus 15 for instance not working at all that is they might have a problem with the motherboard and the amps that are stipulated especially if it's an entry-level motherboard here's where within this setting on the uh, AMD overclocking you can change the ampage itself to the maximum threshold here. And this is nothing to be scared about. It's not gonna blow up your CPU or anything like that. It's just setting the limit higher so that the CPU is say at a particular voltage and it wants to run at a particular wattage setting, then it might need more amps. And if that amp is a limiting factor on the CPU, then it could cause your instability that you're finding with these lower levels like minus 10, for instance, not even working on your CPU. So if you're coming into that problem, you may wish to change these amp settings here, just the maximum limits on both these uh, settings in the BIOS. And then after that, you can save and exit and get back into Windows. And here is where we are going to look at the before and after testing here with both water cooling and air cooling right after today's video sponsor. If you want to get rid of this annoying activate Windows message, then today's video sponsor SCD Keys has you covered for as little as 15 US dollars. After you enter that coupon code BFTYC, you can cop yourself a legit single end user license today. Also works for Windows 11 Pro 2. Links in description below. So that was probably one of the longest uh, intros in the history of Tech Yes City, but at least we got all the gist of it done, right? That's how you lock in your undervolt and make sure it's at least close to stable with the 7800X3D. Now, over the next few days, right, a lot of people tell me you've got to use this program for stability testing or say use this program, it's much better. I've found once I've passed, say, these uh, simple validation methods like running Cinebench for 10 minutes or uh, say even running AMD's own validation stress test in Ryzen Master, I find that they're pretty good at getting close to accurate stability, right? If you pass this test, you're generally pretty close to stable. You may have to drop it down a little bit if you come into crashing in the future. So once you lock in these settings here, do just keep an eye out, say playing games and stuff like that. If you notice games just crash or if you notice your PC just resets, you might have to dial back this offset in the BIOS another 10 steps. So I would that's what I'd recommend doing personally. So if minus 30 doesn't work, dial it back to minus 20, but then you should be good to go after that. So that's how generally I do undervolting. I do take it back quite a big step because I don't want to come into any instability problems in the future because of course I use my PC not just for gaming but also for work and having that time if something crashes is probably not even worth the benefits saved if I'm losing all that time in the process. So anyhow, let's get on now to the results though. The before and after is simply worth it in terms of getting extra performance, but it's not as big as the uh, water and air cooling that we experienced on the 5700X3D. We actually, in yesterday's video, experienced quite a big drop in temperatures and power consumption. But this time around, with air cooling as well as water cooling, we're not really experiencing a big temperature drop here. Though doing these basic tests in Cinebench is apples to apples. It does give me a pretty accurate picture of how the performance is going on these CPUs. And we did see an uplift from on air over 600 points in Cinebench via going with the minus 30 offset and we saved one watt in the process and the temperatures were roughly the same. Now, when it came to gaming, we also saw a better average FPS. We actually saw probably quite a bigger difference in average FPS than we saw yesterday with the 5700X3D. So what the 7800X3D is doing basically is giving you more performance instead of dropping the temperatures and dropping the wattage. It's just flat out giving you more performance 
as opposed to say the 5700 X3D, which is like, hey, I'm just gonna run at a cooler temperature and lower wattage, which I personally do prefer. But hey, these X3D chips, they have minds of their own, or perhaps they are just the slave mind to the AMD mastermind. Let us know in the comments what you think, which one it is. Do you think they got their own minds or do you think they're the slave mind? So the benefits to be extracted from air cooling is definitely worth it for more performance. But if you wanted to go a step further, because 90 degrees for me personally is not really a comfortable level with AMD chips and also even Intel chips, I do like to sit under 80 degrees at all times mainly if I'm gaming. So here's the good news, at least with air cooling, is that we're under 80 degrees, we're well under 80 degrees. We're actually dropping it down a few degrees via doing this offset and it's well under 70 degrees. So while you're gaming, you got nothing to worry about with the, uh, say for instance, a budget air cooler like the snowman that we're using here and undervolting with the PBO offset. It's just when we get to Cinebench or say you're editing videos in Premiere Pro or a DaVinci Resolve, if you're doing this day in, day out, 90 degrees, you just might, might be like me and just not comfortable with it. 80 degrees could be a better setting, which you can lock in with the BIOS itself with an 80 degree limit. Though, let's get on to water and here is where the results do differ a little bit. We did experience a big uplift in Cinebench scores as well, just like we saw with air cooling, but it was in a higher echelon of about 300 points on both sides with the zero setting there, as well as the minus 30. And the wattage was also very similar to that of air cooling and the temperatures though with the water cooler were about minus 10 degrees. So sitting right on that 80 degree sweet spot that we we're talking about before. So basically if you were getting a 7800 X3D, unlike the 5700 X3D, I would actually recommend going with a good water cooler if you were really serious about getting this CPU. Because once you go through the higher motherboard costs, DDR5 costs and the CPU cost itself, the extra money you spend on the water cooler, I believe is just going to be well worth it in this instance and you won't have to manually tune down to 80 degrees which also by the way when you do that on the air cooling you do lose performance then by tuning it down manually to 80 degrees but also when it came to gaming we did see higher average fps lower temperatures not a big result here in the temperature drop but it was a few degrees and of course that extra fps is always a welcome thing across the games we tested here with Baldur's Gate 3 and Counter-Strike 2. Anyhow guys, I hope you found this tutorial quick and easy and to the point, and I'll put the links for the programs that we used here. Well, actually it's just Ryzen Master, but also do make sure you have the BIOS update done in your uh, BIOS for starters, because before I did the BIOS update, there was a limit of minus 30 and after the BIOS update, there was now a limit of minus 50. So the BIOS update can help unlock new limits when it comes to these X3D CPUs. And also in yesterday's video, I am sorry for the mistake. Hopefully it didn't uh, ruin your life. <laughs> and with that aside, guys, I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. And also if there's some tips and tricks of your own in relation to the X3D chips, I would love to read your thoughts and opinions as always. And if you've stayed this far and you're enjoying that Tech Yes content, then you know what to do. I'll catch you next time. Peace out for now. Bye.